Okay, so in my Calculus 1 class, we're starting to talk about integrals, okay? So um, it's important to understand uh, the components of an integral, you know, where are they in a problem, okay? Um, that, that's one of the most important uh, things to get out of calculus, okay, is that you see a real world problem, okay, and you know, you, you have to identify the things in that problem and create an integral that represents that problem. So uh, let's start with uh, not a real world problem, but, but sort of just a graphical uh, problem. And then uh, we'll, we'll create an integral that sort of explains what this thing does. Okay? So we're going to just uh, stick with our standard xy coordinate system. Yes, we're going to have a function here, f of x. We're going to have um, a function here, g of x, okay, both continuous functions. We're going to have a vertical line here. This is going to be uh, a, okay, and this vertical line will be x equals a, right? a is some number, okay? And then we'll have um, another vertical line here, okay, through b, and the equation of this vertical line is x equals b. Notice that f of x is larger than g of x everywhere inside this little domain here, okay? Uh, let's look at how wide this is, right? So if, if b was, I don't know, if b was 7, this is just an example, right? And a was 3, um, how long would this be? 7 minus, 7 minus 3, right? So this is going to be b minus a. So our little domain here is going to be b minus a, right? So if it was 7, 7 and 3 would be 4. Now, <coughs> we're going to chop this up into vertical rectangles, okay? And uh, it doesn't matter right now. We're going to chop it into n vertical rectangles, okay? Uh, and they're going to be exactly the same size. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so n is 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so we've got 13 uh, little rectangles in there, okay? Now, you might say, oh, but they're not rectangles. Look, they have slanty lines on the ends, you know? So they're not really rectangles. They're some kind of weird shape. Okay, uh, let's not worry about that. Let's just say that for our purposes right now, we we'll just define these as rectangles. Okay, so the question now is, how wide is each rectangle? Well, if the whole thing is B minus A, and there are 13 of them in there, then it's got to be b minus a over 13, right? So if, if this distance, you know, if b is 7 and a is 3, then this distance is 4, then this would be 4 over 13. 4 thirteenths each one, right? There's 13 of them, you had them only going to be 4. Now, we also need to um, understand, right, that in each one of these little intervals here, okay, so Let's say that each one of these things here, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so these are the widths of these rectangles. They're all supposed to be exactly the same size, okay? Um, I guess I didn't do such a great job with that. Okay, so they're all exactly the same size, supposedly, okay? Now, in each one of these, there is a point, okay, and that point, I can call that x1, because it's a point inside my first width of my first rectangle. It doesn't matter where it is, okay? And here there's another one, right? And I can call that point x2, yes? And in this rectangle, somewhere in there, there's a point there that's x3, blah, 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 right, all the way to over here, somewhere inside of this little uh, uh, domain here, someplace in here, there's an x13, right? You agree? Okay. 
So let's take uh, let's take this uh, in let's take this it rectangle right here. All right. So there's an x three, right? So this point somewhere in here, okay? This height is going to be g of x three, right? And this height is going to be f of x3. You agree? And the area of rectangle number 3 is going to be what? It's going to be the height times the width. Let's do the width first. The width of all the rectangles is the same. It's b minus a over 13, right? And the height of the rectangle, if you look at it, it's going to be the distance from here to here, which is f of x, right? Minus the distance from here to here, which is g of x, okay? So it's going to be f of x, 3, minus g of x, 3. So this is the width of my rectangle. This is the height of my rectangle. And height times width, that's going to give me the area of that rectangle, right? Now, um, <clears throat> if I wanted the area of this whole, this whole uh, shape here, right, that's bounded on the left by this vertical line, x equals a, bounded on the right by this vertical line, x equals b, bounded on the top by this continuous curve fx, and bounded on the bottom by this continuous curve g of x, right? If I wanted the area of this thing in here, How would I get that? Well, I would just take the sum right, of n equals 1 to 13, yeah. b minus a over n, right, and, um, oh, wait a minute, no, this is going to be uh, over 13. Um, let's do this in a little bit different way. No, okay, let's go, in, let's go ahead and leave it 13. Sorry about that. And then we have here um, times f of x sub n minus g x sub n, right? And if we add these together, you know, we get. Uh, well, notice that our width of our rectangle is always going to be the same, right? And the height of the rectangle is going to change, right? The first one's going to be this height, the second one's going to be the second height, all that stuff. But if we add them all together, right, we'll get something that, that very closely approximates the area uh, that's bounded in here, okay? Now, dealing with these, with these uh, ends, right, the fact that they're not they're not nice rectangles. Yes, they have kind of a shape on them, yeah? Can you see how we can minimize the impact of that? How can we, how can we take the fact that this rectangle has these slanted ends and minimize the impact of that, right? Well, I think you can see, right, that, that the primary thing that causes a problem here is the 13, right? If I cut these super, 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 super thin, then the ends here get closer and closer and closer to not mattering so much, right, that they're at an angle, right? For instance, what if I put a thousand here? Right? I mean, you can see that this automatically does the same thing. It's just a sum, yeah? Except instead of 13, now it's a thousand, right? It's kind of impractical for me to to draw, you know, a thousand rectangles, right? But but over there on the sum, notice notice how easy this is, yeah? Because I made it a thousand, right? How hard is it to make it a million? It's really not hard at all, okay? You can just put you just put more more zeros, right? Now 
if I cut this into a million pieces, yeah, how much difference is it going to make that the ends of these rectangles are not perfectly horizontal? Very, very little. And if that difference bothers me, well, I've got a pen and I can make zeros, right? Now, this thing right here, you're adding a million terms together, right? Uh, something should pop into your head right away, yes? What, what do you want to do? What do you want to use to add a million terms? A computer, right? A, a, computer, a computer can handle this sum very, very quickly. Yeah? Now, um, <clears throat> I said that this x is picked somewhere randomly inside of this, inside of this little tiny domain, right? Um, OK, so you can see that when these things get more and more and more and more narrow, right, you're kind of squeezing in on that x, yeah? You get less and less leeway for where that x is going to be, yeah? And, and if these things get super, super, super narrow, I think you can see that it really doesn't matter where inside of that thing it is, right? I mean, if it's only, you know, a millionth of four wide, right, just the fact that that x is in there somewhere, anywhere, is going to let us uh, get the height of the rectangle. Okay. So, um, and anything, okay, can be looked at as a limit of this process. Okay, the limit as this thing goes to infinity, right? Um, well, well, we could put something up there. What should we put? Um, as n goes to infinity, uh, change this to i, put an n here, um, put an n here, and change these to i's. So this thing here can be written like this. Now, what's dx? dx, well, you can see this, right? dx has to be this thing, right? And this is this one. So these are two vertical lines. This is my upper function, right? This is my lower function, okay? And this is the width of these rectangles. But notice that this width is really, 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 really small. You know? How small is it? Well, it's smaller than that. Okay, so if you understand this, I think you're, you're on your way to being able to use integrals to solve real world problems, okay? If you have any questions, send me an email.